that is popular actually does not really mean that is the only one. So is the case of ratio analysis in financial analysis. Hello everybody, Bengala Tanji here, welcoming you to GTN Saturday channel. We want to look at accounting ratios and financial analysis techniques. Actually, there are so many techniques of analyzing the financial statements and ratio analysis is one of them. We want to dive into everything financial analysis techniques today and soon enough we'll go into the calculating or the calculation part of financial analysis techniques, ratio analysis and everything that surrounds it. Actually, there are so many aspects of financial analysis techniques and ratio analysis is just one of them. Among others are trend analysis, comparative financial statements, common size statements, cash flow analysis, which equally is a bit popular. So these are some of the techniques when we are talking about techniques of financial analysis. Nevertheless, under this, we still have one that is more prominent under this technique, which is uh, ratio analysis. When we are talking about ratio analysis, it has a lot of other analysis under it too as well and I think that makes it to be more popular but as students we actually need the robust knowledge of techniques of financial analysis so I'm going to be explaining them one by one and we pick on on all the five techniques and break them down before I go into it, I would like us to equally know and appreciate that there are different types of analysis. We could have external analysis of financial statements in which let's say our competitor is trying to understand our, our business. We can have internal analysis in which maybe a financial manager or anybody responsible for that task or have interest in knowing is trying to know and decipher our financial statement and understand. We could equally have horizontal, we could have vertical. When we are talking about horizontal analysis, we are talking about looking at many years all together as one to understudy our financial. We could equally call this dynamic analysis. Then when we are talking about the vertical, we can call it static analysis in which it's all it discusses is about that particular year, that financial for that particular year, unlike the horizontal that try to understand more or less like a bit of a trend analysis, couple of years together and analyzing them all together. So let us pick them one after the other. When we are talking about comparative financial statement, we are talking about analysis in which we pick like two years financials together and try to understudy them. Like IAS 1 precisely that talks about presentation of financial statements let us know that unless there is a first year accounting that is being prepared it should have a comparative figure every financial statement should have a comparative figure so at least we have two years to compare so when we are doing this to try to understand our business or the business outside there maybe in our industry when we are comparing two or more years together, we will say that we are having comparative financial statement analysis. So, 
when we're talking about ratio analysis, we will be talking about the mathematical aspects of financial analysis in which we try to study the relationship or interrelationship between different figures. Maybe from the statement of comprehensive income or statement of financial position or interwoven. When we are doing this, like profitability ratio, acid test ratio falls under this category and many more which we are going to look at and later actually learn how to calculate. So when we are doing this, we are using ratio analysis technique for the financial analysis. Then when we are talking about common size statement, basically this goes along the way of percentile, that is turning our figures into percentages. We can, when we begin to use common size statements, uh, let me give us an example of this. Let's say we, uh, we have a turnover of uh, 100 million turnover and we say it's an 100% turnover. 100 million turnover so now by the time we now want to what are the contributors into this sales or this turnover of 100 million let's say for example we now say okay what is the percentage of maybe cost of sales into this sales sales figure we can say is 60 percent is 60% of what is 60% of sales so that's cost of sales turnover that is we are trying to compare in percentage the contribution or the percentage of cost of sales into the volume of total sales that we make so when we are going by this route we we'll say that we are having a common size statement so it's another technique of analyzing the financial statement cash flow statement is equally popular cash flow statement it's under study our working capital and the rest we want to know how cash that came in have been utilized have uh, been dispensed and invested or reinvested and the like by the time we are doing this we are going by the way of cash flow analysis technique of the financial analysis then when we are talking about trend trends cannot actually exist without two or more periods be been examined so we can follow trend in which we say okay last year sales in October last year and sales in October this year we could compare it to establish a trend we could establish trend in quarter per quarter trend okay quarter one against quarter one this year against last year's quarter one and we observe trend so trend helps us at the end of the day to prepare especially for the future let's say there's a season or seasonal variation in which we know that in this trend let's see some some products they say this is not our season so during the off season it is expected that sales will go down and during the peak season it is expected that sales will go up so using trend analysis can help us to, to prepare in readiness for up up peak period so these are the techniques for financial analysis trying to rub this off so that we can now go to some other aspects of analysis
types of accounting ratios now don't forget that accounting ratio is very popular then when we are talking about accounting ratios now we'll be talking about coverage ratio we'll be talking about return ratio we'll be talking about turnover ratio we'll be talking about component ratio so what is component ratio what is turnover ratio what is return ratio and coverage ratio and when can we use them and how should we use them for what purposes are they actually meant for so when should we use coverage ratio coverage ratio ratio should be used when we want to determine the ability of a company maybe in the exam question the ability of the company to meet its obligation may be as per the interest on the loan that they've taken or things like that so we can have interest coverage ratio which shows how many times the interest on fixed interest capital of the company is covered by the company's profitability so for how long in in how many folds can the, our profitability pushing the effect of interest payments? So that is a useful coverage ratio. That's a useful hint to use coverage ratio. Then when we are talking about return ratios, it actually measures the benefit accruing to the company arising from resources committed into a particular work so it's uh, the relationship between the benefits obtained and the resources employed into it that is return ratio so example of it is investment ratio and you know investment ratio is for investors in interest which shows the level of profit end by the capital invested over a period of let's say one year so that is return ratio and there are so many ratios that fall under both coverage returns and even turnover and components so let's go into turnover ratio now when should we use turnover ratio and what does it actually meant for so turnover ratio shows how many times the company has been able to make use of a particular resource to generate benefit or profit to the organization so we can be talking about inventory turnover ratio which measures actually how many times the organization has been able to use the amounts committed to inventory to generate sales especially at a particular period of time and last but not the least under this particular types of accounting ratio is a component percentage and when we are talking about the percentage of components into the whole we are, we are trying to measure the relationship that exists between various components of an item to the item in the percentage term like when we are talking about gross profit to sales gross profit to sales or total overhead head to sales so these are components of one another like gross profit to sales it tries to help us that okay you will make so and so amount of sales let's say hundred thousand sales what's the percentage of gross profit in it and even how this percentage has like an industrial average that is expected especially in different industries like uh, when we're talking about gross profit to sales or gross profit turnover 
some time is is good that it should not be less than 25 percent especially in some industries to cushion the effect of the administrative expenses and the like and a bit of profitability later on so we've spoken about coverage ratio components percentage return ratio and uh, turnover ratio there are other five groups of ratios that can actually be calculated from both the income statement that is statement of comprehensive income and statement of financial position we will be talking about the profitability ratio we're talking about efficiency ratio liquidity ratio investment ratio and solvency ratio when we're talking about profitability ratio what are we talking about this actually measures how profitable we are when we're talking about efficiency that is efficient utilization of our resources that is why it's called activity ratio liquidity actually measures how cash how i'm looking for a better word the how look how liquid we have but that, that for, for for better word the our capacity liquidity ratio measures our capacity to be to to be able to attend to cash transaction cash needs yes our ability to 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 answer to cash needs to make our payments to pay our creditors and the like of course investment ratio talks about investors interest it's about investors interest they want to know how the organization is doing what is any over the unit of share they have any per share and the like i don't want to go into the deep because by the time we go into the calculation aspect we'll begin to now look into different ratios under different groups solvency ratio solvency ratio or leverage ratio this talks about our debt capital and against our equity capital that is the capital structure of the organization whether it's favorable to it or not so from teaching strategy channel next we meet will be calculating starting from profitability ratio we'll be looking at return on capital employed return on equity we'll be looking at gross profit margin we'll be looking at net profit margin among many other ratios that we will be calculating being that Olatunji FCA has been speaking from Jijin's associate channel if you are yet to subscribe please click subscription right away and share 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 to others around you that may need this need to hear or view this presentation Jijin's associates we are value to life we are value to your business next time we'll be looking at ratio analysis calculation